You've probably heard the claim that to succeed at trading, you should keep things simple and not overcomplicate things. On face value, this is true, but it's also incredibly misleading and it's the cause of failure for many beginners. Let me explain. So a woman walks into a Parisian cafe and notices a man sitting at a table scribbling onto his napkin. As the waiter brings over his coffee, he chucks the napkin to the side and at that moment, the woman realizes she's been watching Pablo Picasso. She's awestruck and after debating with herself for a moment, she builds up the confidence to go and speak to him. Monsieur Picasso, she says, I love your work. Could I possibly have that little drawing you've done on the napkin? Picasso looks up at her excited face and replies, yes, of course, madame, that will be 10,000 francs. Her face transforms into outrage. 10,000 francs, but it only took you 30 seconds to draw. No, my dear, he replies, it's taken me 40 years. Now, whether or not that story is true, I doubt it, it has an important meaning, particularly for someone learning to trade. A master of their craft can often make things look quick and simple. An amateur might think that it must be easy to replicate and then set out to do that. That would imply the path to trading success looks like this. And this is where most beginners go wrong. They're doing the equivalent of looking at Picasso's simple sketch and thinking that that's what they need to achieve to be a legendary artist. But if we take a look at The Bull, a famous piece of art by Picasso, we see a different process. And this is also reflected in the progression of Picasso's style over the years. We can see it going from a complex approach to a more simple one. So what's this got to do with trading? It gives us an insight into the route towards mastery. Instead of being linear, like this chart, it looks more like this. As you learn, you progress upwards along the curve. You take on new concepts, new techniques, new knowledge, which increases the complexity of what you're doing. At the beginning, you might only pay attention to a few simple things, but as you progress, you have many different things to mentally process at the same time. It feels complex and difficult. At some point, you'll reach the top of the curve where you experience peak complexity. At this point, you may be able to achieve positive results, but it takes a lot of work and it feels complicated. Now, most people give up long before they reach that point, but those who do reach it will usually stop developing once they get there. They'll feel like they know everything they need to and they'll turn their attention to using the skill rather than developing it further. When people reach this point, we can say that they are satisficed. That's a funny term that you might have encountered if you've ever studied economics. It's a portmanteau of satisfy and suffice and can be loosely translated to mean good enough. In other words, people stop when they feel they've reached a level that's good enough. They don't strive to go further. But going beyond good enough is where all the great things happen. It's how you experience a flow state. It's how you build expertise and achieve mastery. It's how you become a high performer. If we think about the journey up the curve, this is defined by adding more things to what we already know or do. We're increasing the level of complexity, but the journey down the curve is all about subtracting. We're achieving what Lady Klotz describes in his book, Subtract, as post-satisficed less. However, this takes a huge amount of effort. It's like the famous quote by Blaise Pascal, which is famously misattributed to other people. If I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. With my trading, I do mostly try to keep things very simple. It may even appear in some situations to be quite basic on face value, but the simplicity hides a great deal of complexity. And if you want to know more about how I trade and the most important aspects that I believe traders need to focus on, check out the training link down below where I walk you through all of the logic of it. You see, it's by understanding and knowing the complexity that you'll know what's needed and what can be removed in a particular situation. Simplicity begins with knowledge. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Leonardo da Vinci. The approach might look simple, but the thought process that leads to that point relies on years of development and understanding. It's just like Picasso's bull. It's by knowing all the intricate details that he can boil something down to its essence in just a few elegant pencil strokes. In fact, this also relates to what we discover by looking at brain research. This was shown in a study on people learning to play Tetris. When they first started, large parts of their brain lit up, displaying the learning process that was taking place. 
This is when their brain exerted the most energy and everything felt effortful. Then once they mastered the actions that they needed to take, their movements became more habitual and brain activity in the cortex died down. The brain was drawing less glucose and less oxygen and their reactions increased rapidly. They were essentially moving from conscious incompetence to conscious competence and finally to unconscious competence. Their brains were making recurring actions habitual. So you could say based on brain research that we spend a lot more time thinking when we're not good at an activity, which is the opposite of what most people think. And this is exactly what happens when you're developing as a trader. As you add more complexity, everything feels effortful and you have to think through everything you're doing. But when you achieve post-satisfied mastery, your brain can automatically focus on what's important, sometimes even without you realizing, and lead you towards a simple approach. But when a beginner tries to directly imitate the simplicity, they fail miserably. They're misled by the simple output and don't have the knowledge, skills, or understanding to process the complexity that's led to that. They're seeing the swan gliding gracefully over the water, but missing all the kicking that's happening underneath. So although it may be your end goal to gracefully trade the markets with sophisticated simplicity, the journey to that point is not linear. To achieve simplicity, meaningful simplicity, you need to begin with complexity and only then can you put the effort into post-satisfied less. So with all of that being said, what does all of this mean specifically for your trading? Well, there are two main points I want you to take away here. The first is that you should steer well clear of focusing on trading methods that offer you complete simplicity. Things where you just have to memorize some rules, strategies or patterns rather than deeply understanding the logic behind what you're doing. Uh, for example, there's been a recent resurgence in mechanical rules trading, where you completely remove the aspect of discretion or market knowledge. Likewise, there are other methods where you just have to memorize or identify where to place a level or a zone without understanding why it's there and what the rest of the market activity is revealing for you. You know, it might be that eventually your trading does reach a point where you can rely on a simple approach with simple rules, but for that to succeed, it's likely to be due to your brain processing information like a complex algorithm to create that simple output. It's called implicit knowledge. You might not even notice that you're doing it. So instead, while you're developing, you should be focusing your time on learning as much as you can about the markets themselves. You should understand how the markets operate, why prices do or don't move, like what's actually happening, what are the mechanics behind this, and the logical basis behind everything you're doing. Don't just take things on face value, understand the logic, understand if it's meaningful. Explore different methods and learn new things, but make sure you're focusing on the logic of the aspects that you're learning so that you can determine if they're meaningful or not. Most things out there are a complete waste of your time and they're just surface level nonsense. Of course, who wouldn't be tempted by simple secret rules that lead you to profits? That sounds great, I can see why people get tempted by that. But the truth is, Successful trading comes from logic and critical thinking, not from rote memory. Trading is a skill, not something to be memorized. The second point is about what you choose to compare your progress to. It's inevitable that if your journey involves increasing complexity before you start simplifying, you're going to reach a point where your trading feels a lot more complicated and messy than someone who's genuinely succeeding at a later point in their journey but you shouldn't take this as a sign that you're on the wrong track. It simply means that you haven't progressed to that stage yet, but you'll get there eventually, hopefully, provided that you're learning the right things in the right way. Let me make this clear. I'm not saying that you have to overcomplicate things to succeed at trading. We've all seen those charts that look an absolute mess with indicators and lines all over the place. I'm not encouraging you to do that. We don't want to add complexity for the sake of it, I'm saying that before you can achieve meaningful simplicity, it's necessary to understand a certain amount of complexity so that you know what's essential and what can be removed in any particular situation. And it won't always be the same things, just like with any other skill. To be absolutely blunt, the people who promote always keeping trading really simple from when you start learning to when you're an expert are either trying to sell something by making it sound really easy and simple to do, they're giving advice based on survivorship bias because it luckily worked out for them. 
they're not realizing that the complexity they experienced while they were learning gave them the implicit knowledge to be able to achieve their current simplicity or it's just that they can't be bothered to learn about the markets deeply themselves so they argue that it's not necessary to everyone else simply to excuse their own laziness and make them feel better about it. Just saying. And if you want to understand more about how all of this relates to the psychology and neuroscience of learning to trade and why trading is such a frustrating skill to learn more so than other skills then check out this video next.